Good day subscribers and welcome everybody back to The Contrarian. Well, it's that time of year again and there is another 13F filing, this time for the second quarter of 2021 that was just released for Dr. Michael Burry and his hedge fund Scion Asset Management. Now I really like to look at what Dr. Burry is looking into uh, just because he's been a very successful investor in his relatively short career. He's the same uh, Michael Burry featured in The Big Short as well as several other books out there. Um, so I just really like to look at what he's looking into, where he sees value right now, what he's avoiding as well as what he just sold. Um, so I really like to look at what Michael Burry has in his mind. And it's important to keep in mind that this is a somewhat of a look back into hindsight because uh, this 13F filing only tells us what he uh, bought or sold during the second quarter which is uh, end of March through end of June. So right now we are in mid-August and we're, you know, a couple months after that. So it is somewhat in hindsight, you know, we, we don't entirely know where Michael Burry is right now in terms of he could have sold or bought uh, some new positions since this 13F filing actually was uh, recorded. So it is somewhat of a hindsight view and uh, also, just a brief update for this channel is I will be recording in a different location. I got some comments about how the uh, previous location I was recording in was somewhat, somewhat dull, and that is uh, that is pretty correct. So I did rearrange the attic, and I'm now up here recording uh, these videos. So without further ado, I will uh, bring up the screen and just uh, dive through this 13F with all of you. Okay, everybody, so I'm looking on Whale Wisdom, uh, which is just a great place to get uh, information about institutions and institutional filings. And uh, just uh, something that I saw up here that I think is uh, important to point out is that um, it appears that Michael Burry has either gotten a lot more uh, funding in his hedge fund or something uh, at least has happened to where he's now managing over two billion dollars, which I believe is more than he has ever managed. I, I don't know about uh, prior to the um, great financial crisis when he was shorting subprime mortgages, but it appears that this could be his largest, uh, essentially the largest amount that he's ever managed. Um, and also just looking at the, at the graph of, um, you know, how much uh, assets he has had under management, it has definitely grown recently. So that's just important to keep in mind. Uh, now getting on to his, uh, his uh, holdings right now, he is still shorting Tesla, which has a you know, it has gone somewhat well in uh, the second quarter. So again, uh, April through June, um, Tesla has somewhat stayed flat. It has definitely zigzagged around in the in the range that it has been at. I think Michael Burry definitely sees Tesla going down much, much further than where it even is right now. Um, just given that it has basically 10 x in the last two years, I do think that Michael Burry, as well as myself, uh, by the way, I don't think that Tesla really stays at this valuation indefinitely. I don't think that the fundamentals catch up with it that quickly. I do think that it has a ways to fall still. Um, but it's interesting to see that Michael Burry, apparently, this is a much longer term position. Um, he, he's, he's still waiting for it to fall further, which does make sense given his past tweets about Tesla potentially falling to under $100 a share. Um, so he first started this back in the first quarter of 2021, and this is still going through the end of June and probably still going right now, if I had to guess. Um, moving on, he has a call on Facebook that he has actually increased his position on in the second quarter. So that shows me that he's still very bullish on Facebook. And if anything, that grew during the second quarter. Uh, so big tech, he's, he's still bullish big tech. Um, also uh, put on... Uh, the price of treasury bonds. So he's essentially betting that the rates continue to rise and the price on the bonds falls. So he's therefore shorting the price of the bond. Um, and this has uh, essentially stayed flat, I would say, through the second quarter. Uh, into the third quarter right now, TLT has actually gone up. So if he still held this, he's probably um, wishing he'd sold it or I, I don't know, but I actually do think that this will play out well for him long term. I do think that rates are going to uh, rally pretty soon here. So I do think that, uh, just my personal thoughts on that, I do think that this will work out well for him in the future. Also, he increased a call 
on uh, Google in the second quarter as well. So that shows me that he's also <laughs> bullish of big tech again, just adding to this position on Google. Uh, McKesson Corporation, a new position entirely. Uh, a call on this healthcare company, 6% um, of his portfolio. So this is an entirely new position for him. Uh, added just this quarter. Uh, Kraft Heinz, um, he has held this since the fourth quarter of 2020. Um, just another consumer staples brand. I, I think he sees that this will just do well as consumers continue to uh, spend more and more as as the uh, economy recovers from the COVID lockdowns and everything. Um, yeah, a call on Kraft Heinz. Uh, all of these large positions are calls and puts, by the way. Um, I I would just like to point out how unique that is for a institution. I don't see many other institutions out there playing around with options as much as Cyan Asset Management and Dr. Michael Burry do, so that's definitely unique to him. Uh, also, he added a call on Walmart, just another consumer staples. Uh, I think for similar reasons as Kraft Heinz, he just sees consumer spending continuing to increase, at least in the second quarter. Um, I, I don't know that that will be a, a long-term thing, hence why all of these are call and put options. I think he, he sees this as kind of a temporary position for him to hold and benefit from. Uh, Cardinal Health, again, added in the second quarter. Another large position, relatively large at least, 2%. Um, CVS, a call on uh, CVS, uh, Consumer Staples. This is an interesting one. Uh, put on ARC. Um, uh, put on ARC essentially is betting against Kathy Wood, and um, that's very in line with shorting Tesla as well. In my mind, I would, I would think that it's very similar reasons. As Obviously, we know uh, ARC Invest is very bullish and long Tesla as well as other, you could say, uh, companies in the realm of Tesla that are arguably valued way outside of their fundamentals. So I think Michael Burry is definitely betting just that that will not uh, hold up well long term. Now we get out of the option plays of Michael Burry. We get, in, we get into uh, discovery, communications, um, also added in just this last quarter, second quarter of 2021. Um, Energy, we get into Avinasiv Inc. Energy Corporation. I had not heard of this before, um, so it's new to me. Michael Burry is very good at, at bringing up new uh, companies that I've never heard of before. Uh, but he also added that in just this last uh, quarter. Uh, Geo Group, he's held this since the fourth quarter of 2021. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing new or changed there. Um, CVS, uh, he has both a call option on CVS and shares on CVS, which is kind of interesting that he, he has both, um, don't quite know what to think of it, except that he probably uh, sees both long-term and short-term upside in CVS. Uh, Core Civic, uh, this is kind of one of, could be said, one of the more controversial, as well as Geo Group um, holdings that Dr. Michael Burry has, just with uh, the current situation at the southern border and how these two corporations benefit from the uh, private prison systems there. So anyway, um, I think Michael Burry doesn't really, he at least doesn't seem to care entirely. Uh, I don't quite know where the line is for him in terms of what he would invest in, what he would not invest in. I personally probably would not invest in either of these, but that's totally up to him. Um, uh, Scorpio, tr Scorpio Tankers, another Another uh, transports uh, energy company that I'd never heard of before, uh, oil tanker transports, essentially a very relatively small position for him added in the first quarter of this year. Um, what is this one called? <laughs> Marin Marinus uh, Pharmaceuticals. Okay. A new position for him this year as well. Suncoke Energy. Um, yeah, nothing really new there. Uh, another energy company. And then we get down into these uh, more um, small positions of his, and also the ones that he has sold out of. He's sold out of Occidental, uh, Zymeworks. Um, let's see what else he has sold out of. Uh, shame to say I don't entirely know what all of these are. Um, RPT Real Estate, I remember that from uh, the uh, last year, yes. Um, another energy company. Uh, Lumen, okay. 
So essentially he sold out what I can see is a lot of energy, a lot of uh, real estate and you know finance sectors. Obviously every company is unique, but I just think that overall his portfolio represents essentially a short term, a bullish outlook on the relatively largest companies out there, the Facebooks, the Googles, the Walmarts, Kraft Heinz. Um, I think his, his portfolio essentially represents a bullish outlook uh, for the short term, but not necessarily for the long term. He's definitely very skeptical of the valuation put on Tesla right now, and the valuation also put on other companies out there that ARK Invest has in their portfolio. So things like Roku, Square, um, just their largest holdings out there that are arguably grown way beyond any sort of fundamental valuation that could be placed on them. I think uh, me and Burry probably see things relatively um, similarly. I kind of agree with him. I do think that the stock market continues to rally probably through relatively the end of this year. However, after that, I do think that once it reaches kind of the, the end of the line in terms of once inflation finally begins really heating up and getting out of control, when the Fed really has no option to continue um, all the asset purchases, all of the stimulus, all of the quantitative easing that they have done. I do think that that does put the stock market in a very risky position. When the Fed starts to actually try to combat inflation, whether that be through raising rates, whether that be through quantitative tightening like they did at the end of 2018, I do not think that that bodes well for uh for the stock market as a whole, but especially for stocks like Tesla and even stocks like Facebook and Google, which are at historically high valuations, I just would be very uh, skeptical of being in those at that time. But I do agree with Dr. Burry that I think that uh, some of these will continue to rally in the short term here. Um, so all that being said, I don't intend for this video to be taken as financial advice in any way, shape or form. I just really do uh, think it's interesting to look at what Michael Burry is uh, putting his money in right now, not only what he has said on Twitter, which, uh, by the way, I think he completely deleted his Twitter account, so there is really no way to tell what he's uh, thinking right now, but, but uh, looking at these 13F filings uh, do still give us an insight into where his, his money is. So if you really liked this video, if you want to hear more about what I talk about on this channel, The Contrarian, which uh, I call it The Contrarian because I typically uh, take uh, different stances on things than the majority of other investors out there. And that is simply because if you want to outperform the market, you have to look for value where other people are not going. This is what basically every successful investor has done in, uh, in their prime time. You know, if you look at Warren Buffett, when he was running Berkshire Hathaway, say back in the 80s, this is exactly what he was doing. He was looking for value where very few other people were looking for it. So that is what I really like to talk about on this channel. So if you like this kind of content, just consider subscribing and I hope to see you again.